Hello everyone, today I want to shake up to wake up, I want to talk about seven ways to awaken. Hello everyone, you'll hear me talk about it all the time, you'll hear me talk about awakening. And for me, I really feel like it's a great work word. I felt like I was asleep for the majority of my life. And finally to wake up and to see that the power, the control, the ability I have to control my mindset, it is simply like waking up. So how do you wake up? Now, we're gonna talk about how to get shaken to be awakened. You know, there's different ways to become awakened and you don't have to meditate under a Bodhi tree like my homeboy said out of Kaltama. You don't have to have, you know, a disaster in your life. But we're gonna talk about the different ways you can be shook up to woke up if um, I was trying to rhyme, not using real words. So as always, I'm going to begin with a quote, and that quote is, Each morning we are born again. What we do today is what matters most. The Buddha. I live this concept. I only have to deal with things for a max 24 hours, because when I go to sleep, I enter a version of death, which is sleep, because you, your consciousness disappears, which is consciousness may be even go back to the universal consciousness or source consciousness, who knows, right? We don't know much about dreaming. But that's what a lot of people think about death. I think that when they die, they'll, they, they won't have their consciousness. If that's true, then you die every night. Why is that not so scary and freaky? Well, because it gives you an opportunity to truly live today. So, my personal story was, yeah, I feel like I was in a daydream. I feel like how often was I here in my body with someone looking into their eyes in the past. And I don't know how often, maybe special moments, maybe when I was in love, maybe when I was having you know, incredible conversation, maybe when I had too many coffees. But most of it was a daydream, a sleep, a thought, fantasizing about if I had this or could do that. And really, that time was wasted time. Now that I believe I've awakened, I've, uh, I'm now awakened, every moment has value, every moment has quality, every day seems like it goes for as long as it needs to. Months seem like they're actually months rather than weeks. I'm not sure if you feel me here, but geez, you know, this Western society has you looking at the years on a calendar and flying off the page. It's like, you know, really bad. All these movies where they do those dream sequences in the future and the calendar just flips off pages to illustrate that it's the future. So how do we do this? We've got seven ways, right? Number one, don't wait for rock bottom. Embrace it. Then, I'm a big fan of tragedy. In fact, so was Shakespeare, so was all the great playwrights, you know, Homer's Iliad is all about tragedy. In fact, all great human stories involve tragedy. Why? They involve tragedy because at rock bottom, like um, the Harry Potter novelist um, J.K. Rowling said, rock bottom was the solid foundation she built her life. So many people are one disaster away from awakening. But you don't have to wait for that divorce, for that death, for that heart attack. You can embrace it now because thought, which isn't always our friend, we can use thought and we can think about what would it be like right now if I lost everything and what would I change? What would I do differently if I only had six months to live and then live that? Two, know deeply. There's real positive motivational stuff coming around you right now. Know deeply you will die. You will die. This thing that you think is your you will die. And if that's true, you've got nothing to lose. You hear me say all the time, you came in with nothing, you go out with nothing, and everything in between is cream, gravy. Now, knowing that means that, what are you stressing about? You know, if you, if you could take things to the afterlife, like the Egyptians sort of um, allowed their pharaohs to believe, yeah, I would get this world. I would get why people stress out so much to get the boat and the car and the house they rarely use. But you don't take it with you. All you take with is your karma, your love, and the positive changes you've made on this planet. Work on that. Number three, it all goes back in the box. That amazing story I told about three months ago about Monopoly on how you can sit there and fight for Mayfair and when you finally get Mayfair you can think you're all that, but once the game is over, the board shuts, it all goes back into the box. And what are you left with? Who you are as a human. Number four, who is in charge? Watch Fight Club. I did a video on Fight Club. Great, great movie. And you know Edward Norton's got the gun in his mouth held by, held by Brad Pitt when he instantly realises that he is holding the gun, not Brad Pitt, because he is in charge. These thoughts, these you know, psychotic thoughts that come into his head, he's in charge of those thoughts. Take charge. Know that when that voice says blah, 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 you can just say, I don't want to fucking answer you. <laughs> Number five, you can wake up at any moment. This is the coolest thing about Zen. 
There's a thing called Satori, and one of my favorite stories of Satori is that um, you know, a Zen monk in Japan went out to a rowboat to sit in a lake to meditate until he reached Satori, and he meditated for days and days and days until finally a seagull flew over his head and went, Aga! and he was instantly enlightened. So I believe what that story illustrates is that you can go wait, you can go do all the work you want, but ultimately you should have knowledge in your heart that enlightenment can come at any moment and you should just be ready for it. And being ready and prepared for it is all that matters. Is the seagull the way to enlightenment? No, I think what that story tells is that ultimately being ready for enlightenment when it comes in the moment is the most important thing. I think we all have Satori moments, but we don't embrace them. A Satori is a flash of insight of enlightenment. So often we let it pass or we're distracted and don't see it. Six, Martin Heidegger. I will constantly say that you definitely, definitely taught me this and I follow your advice. So, visit graveyards. Visiting graveyards is incredibly important. When Heidegger, one of the greatest philosophers of all time, was asked what advice would he give for people to live better lives, he said, spend more time in graveyards. Because each stone, each headrest, each grave is a reminder that those people had the same dreams, thoughts, worries, anxieties as you. And if they could just come out, not zombie style, but if they could come back and live 10 minutes, they would tell you for sure, don't worry about the shit that I'm worried about. Being alive is so important. Use it. Number seven, put this moment and yourself first. They're the two things you really need to do. It's not selfish. You know, I hear so many people talk about, you know, oh, geez, I've got to put other people first. It's just so selfish to put myself first. They're not doing the world very good, I tell you. They're the most stressed, anxious people I know. Your job is to put this moment first, and from this moment, come from this moment, and ask yourself, what's the most compassionate thing I can do to myself? And what happens is after months and years of doing that, you realize sometimes the most compassionate thing you can do for yourself is to help others, but coming from that place of knowing that helping someone else is helping yourself makes it that much more cooler. Wake up. That's all I have to say. Wake up. It's beautiful when you do. It's something to think about. In fact, the majority, 97% of people watching this video have woken up, and I'm just cool and loving this experience because you get it. For the, for the other 3%, you're almost there. Just keep plotting away. I promise you, waking up is so beautiful, so powerful. It's something to think about. I can't wait to see you tomorrow when we're all woke. Goodbye.